This is In Character. I'm your host, Gerard Robinson, Vice President for Education at the Advanced Studies in Culture Foundation. Derek, welcome to In Character. Hey, thanks for having me back. I'm glad to have you. So first question is, what attracted you to the administration side of work uh, rather than staying in the classroom? Uh, That's a really good question. Uh, Over the course of my tenure in the English classroom, I was going through and advancing my studies from a master's to an EDS to then finally a doctorate degree. And a lot of those studies were encapsulated in leadership. Um, And I kept having conversations about teacher leadership and how we break the hierarchy and that everyone in the building is a leader. Um, They lead from the four walls of their classroom, but also outside of those walls and thinking about um, policy and curriculum and the materials that we source to put in front of kids each and every day. Um, And the opportunity arose for me to be able to step into a position where I could lead within the building of how do we, how do we even change the script from the front office of saying that all of these teachers in the building are leaders and they don't have to fill out a piece of paper to say that, or they don't have to have a plaque on the wall that says they are a leader, but because they work with students each and every day, they are leaders in their classroom. And so how do you run a building that focuses on that? That teachers are always at the table and they're always a part of the discussion with parents, with central office, um, and with policy things that need to the change and shift based off the needs of our community and the needs of our students. Great. What actions did you take uh, as an administrator to build a culture of community within your learning community or even within your school district, if applicable? Um, well, within the school, we really started thinking about, right, teacher leadership that I mentioned earlier, but even more so of how are teachers always at the forefront of our decisions along with students, but also at the table to make those decisions. So we started what was called uh, the learning leader network within our building. And so um, every teacher had the opportunity to provide feedback and to continue their growth cycle and thinking about um, how do we always get better within these practices in the classroom, but through the leadership standpoint, right? We're professional educators. So our goal is not just to come to work every day and to teach the kids from eight to three, but how do we also get better at our craft and get better at the leadership positions that we carry? Um, and so I think it took honest conversations and then it took structures and Um, policy shifts of how do we make sure that this building is run in a manner that allows teachers to be at the table each and every day and that they are a part of those conversations. That it's not the guy from the office making the call, but that we're sitting down and we're collaborating and we're gathering feedback. They're the ones on the front lines. Um, They're the ones that are in front of students each and every day. So that took a lot of uh, dialogue and then shifts in policies and practices. So we had to sometimes throw out of, well, this is how we've always done it and start thinking about, but how do we do it moving forward? You know firsthand as a teacher and a leader that making policy shifts inside of a school building is easier said than done. Um, What did you do to either incentivize people to to do it? Um, Were there some external variables that you had to put in place? How do you make those shifts? Because I'm sure other principals want to see the same thing. Yeah, there, there were definitely external. So we worked with our district office in thinking about how did they follow through with leadership for teacher leaders? Um, and so they have two networks set up, but then how do we bring that in-house, right? So it's one thing for them to go to CEO once a month, um, but what does it look like that you carry that cycle day in and day out within a building? Um, so working alongside of them and then looking at best practices, um, looking at the National Institute for Education Engagement and thinking about what different places across the country were doing to make this happen in their districts. Uh, Lots of reading and then lots of follow-up conversations just like this of, well, what are you doing in your school and how can we implement it in our school? Um, We worked a lot with our state collaborative on informing ed as well and how teachers can go to day on the hill once a year and have their voice heard and go around to policymakers and how then they can bring that back to within the school of, okay, so if this is the decision that's made and this is how it affects kids, what's the, what's the trickle down effect and what's the trickle up effect? How are we, a communication thread versus just receiving that information and then being the ones expected to carry it out. And good points. Now, you know firsthand also what it means to receive an award for the work that you've done. Now, many people in Tennessee or really throughout the United States may never get a chance to uh, meet someone who won the award that you did. And I'm not going to steal your thunder by saying what it is. But walk us through the day someone said, we're going to nominate you for A or the fact that maybe you nominated yourself all the way to the moment in which you heard your name called? 
I still get chills thinking about when the bell rang and they made the announcement in the afternoon and they said, Dr. Voles is the 2017 Tennessee Teacher of the Year. And kids stood up screaming and chanting. And we just had that, that moment, right? We pour our lives into each other day in and day out. But, um, you know, it started with a nomination. It, it happens within our school. You first have to, in our district, win your school. So your school picks and then it goes to the district. And then the district picks based off of a resume and application. And then it goes to the regional core office. Um, and in my opinion, and a lot of teachers would agree, the hardest place to win is your school. I mean, you're competing not only against amazing educators, but it's also um, really difficult sometimes to think about, well, what does this award represent to us? Is it about continual professional learning? Is it about um, what happens in the classroom day in and day out? And so I had an administrator who set up variables or a guiding framework for us to start thinking through of that it's not just a popularity contest and it's not just that we pick someone to say we selected someone, but that we start thinking about who are the people in the field that are moving and shaking and um, making things happen, not only for kids each and every day, but also for the profession. Um, so it was truly an honor to, a two year process of going through that selection, going through the district and then the region and then finally to the state and sitting at that round table with Commissioner McQueen and the other teacher of the year finalists and that feeling of tonight we're going to know. And um, so it's super exciting. Yeah, Beck, I know you're uh, Commissioner well and uh, glad you had a chance to support her in your work. Well, Derek, thank you for joining me on In Character. Uh, you provided us some wonderful insights into uh, school-based leadership, uh, some of the challenges, but also some of the ways that you're, uh, you're moving the needle in the right direction. Uh, glad to have you a part of our network and look forward to future conversations. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. Have a good one. Thank you.